Hello, and welcome. I'm Zabraxi. Man, being a Star Fox fan is exhausting. By the time Star Fox Assault came out, it was just... It felt impossible to be hyped about a new entry. I didn't even hate Star Fox Adventures, and I'm just... I'm just tired. 2005 was an absolutely insane year for video games. We're just jumping right into it, huh? Just look at the lineup here. Splinter Cell Chaos Theory, Shadow of the Colossus. I mean, heck, say what you want about Call of Duty, but COD 2 releasing was a real paradigm shift for the entire industry, and it's honestly a stellar game. Keep that going with The Prince of Persia, The Two Thrones, and Indigo Prophecy, and damn, Devil May Cry 3, and Psychonauts. Seriously? Seriously, that too? I mean, Advance Wars Dual Strike also came out this year, so what the heck? All right, fine. I guess I'll get up. <sighs> Maybe later. There are still so many amazing games like God of War, Battlefront 2, Castlevania Dawn of Sorrow, True Crime New York City, Mario Kart DS, Shadow the... Shadow, sh sh Shadow the Hedgehog? Who the f*** let you in here? You know what? Guild Wars came out in 2005, so that year is basically peak gaming. But there was another release this year for the Nintendo GameCube that was ready to take the world by storm. A sequel in a franchise that many were begging for. Something Nintendo was incredibly excited to finally show off to the world. Please welcome Resident Evil 4. Wait, hold on a sec. That, that's, that's not Star Fox. RE4 came out a month, one month before Star Fox Assault would drop and, well, damn, of course people ignored Assault. Resident Evil 4 on GameCube was quickly being heralded as one of the greatest games of all time, and put that next to Star Fox Assault, which, well, I mean, at the time, its greatest thing going for it was that it actually played like the game on the N64, so, you know, the bar was a little low. I mean, when you look at these two games side by side, it's, uh, pardon my French, but who could be bothered? And even if you were more of a Nintendo loyalist and wanted to support the big end during this time, January also released the Minish Cap. So if you were tight on money, would you pick Zelda or Star Fox or Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memories or Pokemon Emerald or Animal Crossing Wild World or Fire Emblem Path of Radiance? Holy f the good games just don't stop. E3 2003, the world would see its first major glimpse into Star Fox Assault. And looking back, honestly, this trailer sucks. It's not visually interesting. The editing is incredibly dull. Much of the gameplay looks severely unfinished. Textures don't even look even remotely close to done. And well, there's another thing this trailer spends an awful long time showing that didn't really sit well with many, especially when you notice just how small all of the maps are that are shown. And while tons of people did enjoy the Star Fox 64 multiplayer, myself included here, it seems like this focus of the trailer was on that and it was a bit surprising. Well, it's surprising until you realize that at this point in the development, less than two years until release, this was actually supposed to be a game called Star Fox Armada, a completely multiplayer entry in the franchise. This isn't the last time we'd hear the name Star Fox Armada, as it's also the same project name as the rumored Star Fox title that was never actually released for the Wii U, which was supposedly being developed by Retro Studios. Assault was also known as Star Fox 2, which I, I, even though the canceled game already existed and we already knew what it was and it was basically close to done, I mean, that wasn't a secret then. And then, oh, there was also another code name for it. It was st st Star Fox. Sweet. In my Star Fox Adventures retrospective, I spent a lot of time, actually basically the, the whole thing, trying to present both sides of the aisle. There's a lot to that experience, and regardless of where you personally land, it's impossible to deny that Adventures did an absolutely insane amount of damage to the Star Fox reputation. The original Star Fox sold about 3 million units, and 64 would sell 4 million. Adventures, on the other hand, would turn the series straight downhill, and each consecutive entry would sell worse and worse, with the only exception being Star Fox 64 3D. 
Trust me when I say I'm not bringing all this up to bag on Star Fox Adventures. I'm not trying to open up any old wounds of being bullied on the playground because you liked that game. I'm really not. The entire episode I did on Adventures goes over my conflicted feelings, but I don't hate SFA at all. But somehow, some way, people were angry after that release. Like, furious at that game. The echoed message over and over again was to just put Fox back in the R-Wing. This statement would be repeated ad infinitum by fans and critics alike to form a bit of a feedback loop that self-amplified into an aggression not seen too many times before. So, with all of that said, when that first reveal in 2003 was shown, Star Fox is back! Fast and furious gunfighting action! What the f is this? Fast and furious gunfighting action! Are you serious? Fox still has feet? What's crazy here is according to a magazine, Electronic Gaming Monthly, much of the audience actually booed during this trailer. An audience booed at an E3 event. Are you kidding me? Fallout 76 got an applause. Every single sports game gets an applause. Every car game that looks exactly like the other car game that announced before it gets an applause. Every Battle Royale shooter that looks like every other 17 Battle Royale shooters that got announced today gets an applause. Hell, even when EA said that Command & Conquer was gonna make its big return, only to have a mobile game announced, even that at least had people so puzzled that they were silent. To get booed at E3? Uh, honestly, that's a bit of a badge of honor. It isn't pretty, but at least in 2004, we would get an updated trailer that would look much better. I, I, you, 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 I, oh, come on. Did you learn nothing? You just got booed a year ago. Booed at E3 for showing Fox on foot too much. And in this new one minute longer trailer, we don't even see him jump into a Landmaster until 43 seconds in. And we never see him in an R-Wing, not even once. This time around, fans didn't just boo, they were furious. Somehow, Fox having the ability to walk became a political statement of sorts. It had the potential to cause riots and even wars. Uh, despite the fact that you could already do this in Star Fox 64 multiplayer anyway. But I remember being pissed. I remember being livid. I remember yelling and being mad. And I don't even know why, but oh boy, was I pissed like everyone else. But at the end of the day, if I'm being honest, eh, nothing was really going to stop me from playing Star Fox Assault. <clears throat> But nothing was going to stop me from playing Star Fox Assault. Huh? What do I want now? I said... Uh, Legend of Dragoon. Oh! <laughs> oh, 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 come on. That's a low blow. I can't just be using the Legend of Dragoon's name in vain like that. That's not cool. So, all right, fine. So, about Star Fox Assault. I think it's important to take a real hard look at Star Fox Assault and- oh, oh, Wait a minute! What's with this footage? Why isn't it widescreen? What's this boxed nonsense? Star Fox Adventures had widescreen. Why did they remove it in Assault? I mean, you actually can force the game into widescreen on- But even that doesn't look right at all. All right, well, it's not that big of a deal. Well, anyway, wait, 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 Namco? Namco made this? All right, uh, question, why? All right, I, I, I get it to some extent. Star Fox was originally developed by Argonaut and all, but after Nintendo self-developed 64, like the undisputed masterpiece that it is, why not just develop it yourself again? Granted, Star Fox Adventures did sell well and was mostly critically received just fine, if you count selling well being less than half of what 64 did, but it was incredibly controversial still, so 
Why would you want to risk it? Especially on a franchise that has a record of selling pretty well with its first few entries. Like, the original SNES and 64 versions did really, really fine. It just seems a bit irresponsible to bounce developers around this much, especially a dev team who has nothing connected to Star Fox, really. It'd be like having F-Zero GX be developed by the same team who made, I, I don't know, the, the Yakuza series or something ridiculous like that. Holy f it actually was them. Namco had a lot to deliver, and despite the joke I made prior, they actually were up to the task, considering they did have the absolutely stupid fun series Ace Combat under their belt. If anything, we at least knew the flight mechanics would be good. But Star Fox Assault would require far more than good Arwing controls. Fans were begging for a return to form with Assault, and Namco had the potential, but would they execute? For all intents and purposes, Star Fox Assault sets up to be the dream sequel fans had been begging for. The Landmaster returns, the R-Wing is back and better than ever, and the shakeup of on-foot sections, while controversial to even myself back then, it did have the opportunity to provide an entirely new staple to the Star Fox formula. Listen, if in Star Fox 64 I spent like 40 hours trying to unlock on-foot for multiplayer, the fact that I'm getting it for free should really not be a big deal. I should be excited about that. While Namco definitely would have to prove it, Assault could really get the fans back who had become incredibly vocal for their distaste of, well, uh, a single misstep in the series. Seriously though, why were so many of us that mad back then? It was one game which was something that we didn't want. One! We actually still had it pretty good. It's not like we were Sonic fans. Although to be fair, anybody who is both, Star Fox Adventures started off as a bit of a tease for those who were hoping for a true iteration of Star Fox gameplay. The opening R-Wing stage is incredibly bare bones and simple, but the gameplay and the music sets the game up to be hype worthy. The only problem is, then Adventures was nothing like that except for a few sections and the retconned out of nowhere, God, what is this final boss? Assault on the other hand opens up in a way that, well, I. I feel like I've played this before. Yeah, uh, fighting a ton of Andros grunts in the atmosphere of a planet, done that. These ships over here are straight out of Star Fox 64, done that. Oh, and the Shogun mech is even back. None of the awesome voice lines happen though, like him saying, cocky little freaks. Oh, also, have you heard the Shogun's death yell in Japanese? It's insane compared to the English version. Like, like check out the English line here. <laughs> And now here's the Japanese one. Oh my God, that's genuine nightmare fuel. Well, despite so much of the first stage being very unoriginal, we at least get a chance to shine with a brand new boss fight against the new leader of the Andros army, Andrew Oinkany, who, wait a minute. I, 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 I'm really not trying to be like this, but I think we've done this boss fight before too. Isn't this basically just the Spyborg from Sector X in Star Fox 64? Man, Namco is really trying to go for nostalgia on this first level, huh? Nostalgia for like seven years ago. However, we do finally get something new and original after Andrew is defeated because we're introduced to the real threat in Assault, the Aparoids. These are an insect race that essentially operates like a hive mind and are attempting to consume all life in the Lilat system. All right, we finally have something new and it's a boss fight right off the bat. And uh, you, are you kidding me? I, I think we've done this too. It's basically just that big lava volcano guy on the solo level from 64. Like we get it. We get it, Amco. You played Star Fox 64 before making this. We, we got it, thanks. I think I'm gonna go play Shadow of the Colossus or something. You know what though? Like if I'm being honest, thinking about it, Namco really was in a bit of a predicament here. The response to adventures was so aggressive. It was so overblown that I can't say I blame them for going this route. Designing the first level in such a nostalgic way 
really does work in some manner, while also failing miserable in others. By taking this path, you do at least secure Star Fox veterans by ensuring them that Assault will have good arrowing sections with solid gameplay, and it also conveys that the developers are very aware of Star Fox 64. So hopefully we'll get some of that greatness from that game to spill over into this one. It's very clearly an olive branch to players, and overall, it works pretty well looking at this level on its own. It's a pretty good first stage. However, it also fails in this regard because by using so much damn stuff from 64, this first level almost feels exhausting. It feels like we've done this for the third time now. Because we have! We've been to Fortuna twice already before this stage. We've fought these exact same enemies before. We've defeated these bosses before. I mean, heck, even the dialogue between the party members is so many of the same lines we've heard from 64. And we even get the whole Slippy immediately getting attacked. We've done all of this multiple times already. So while Namco did their best to appease the players, it honestly is tiresome. It's exhausting when it shouldn't be. Thankfully, from here on out, things do get a little better. Yo, you wanna play some Star Fox? Hello? Who is that? And why do I always have ominous voices speaking to me in the sky? I mean, sure, I'll play multiplayer, but I gotta, I gotta get through the campaign first. Okay, so the first level is done. And yeah, on its own, it's actually really good. But now, the stage is set in order to show the player how truly terrifying the Aperoids are. Hearing Pepper and Peppy talk about the Aperoids in such a demeanor of fear is really intimidating. Such strange thought patterns. No, it can't be. Members of Star Fox, a grave danger looms. The Lilac system is in peril. What? Uh, excuse, excuse me? Wait a minute. We're just in the second level? I, I, I mean, I know most games do that, but not in my Fox base game, that's not for sure. I didn't get to pick a path at the beginning, or, or it didn't show me which branch I was taking. You mean to tell me that we're gonna move from level to level in a consecutive order to allow for a more narrative-focused experience? Do I like that? Like, I, I think I do, but... F*** man, even as a Star Fox fan, I don't know what I want. It's no wonder we don't get many of these things. So we totally lose a ton of the replayability with this campaign structure, which is a bit of a bummer, considering that was one of Star Fox's greatest strengths. The flip side to this, though, is that we get the best Star Fox narrative to date, and yeah, I'm including adventures in that statement. While adventures introduced a ton of new characters and attempted to explore the lore of Dinosaur Planet, it pretty much kept its surface level the entire way through, and the only character that really grew in any meaningful way was, well, nobody, actually. SFA attempted to craft an epic tale for sure, and the original Dinosaur Planet did set the stage for a fascinating plot between Crystal and Saber. But Assault is such a step up. The most obvious change in the party now is that Crystal is finally marking the first female member of Star Fox. Ew, girl. It's mentioned that Crystal is a psionic, which, well, uh, it doesn't really end up providing much useful, but it's kind of cool nonetheless. I hope they explore that further a little bit more. There is though a ton of dialogue in which she provides a very useful outside perspective. Her new introduction to the Star Fox team is refreshing and really changes the way the entire cast looks at problems. She's an interesting character overall, but just doesn't get a real shining moment, so to speak. She doesn't have that whoosh moment, whatever whoosh means. I know there's so much love for Crystal in the community, and I always feel a bit bad picking on her, but there's just not enough here. She really deserves more, and it's clear that the love for her is definitely her, uh, her, uh, uh, you know, uh, yeah, yeah, you know where this goes. She takes the spot of Peppy, who in his old age has moved into more of the strategist role of the group. I mean, realistically, he already was in this role, but since he's not in the action, he can provide more meaningful insight, and it actually works out incredibly well in practice. Slippy and Slippy's dad as well still keep to the engineering role, while Falco, well, Falco finally gets some real character. Slippy, you've already got bogeys on your tail. Ugh, 
Look, I, I get it. I know the joke is that Slippy is a terrible pilot, and it is canon that Slippy isn't very good at manning the whole R-Wing thing. But man, Assault, I think, leads into this joke a bit too much. It's quite honestly rather obnoxious and just ends up having everyone just bagging on Slippy the entire game, despite the fact that the guy is doing his best and, well, not for nothing, he's quite literally one-fourth of the crew that is about to save the entire Lilat system again. A solar system. He is one-fourth of that. Though, honestly, one of my favorite parts on the whole game is when Slippy gets absolutely sick of Falco shit. Gotcha. Try not to make a mess of things, Slippy. Don't ever ask Falco. Seriously. Shut your beak for one. Thankfully, because of the narrative structure that Assault has, we get to explore each character so much better than ever before. And one of those is Slippy and his intellect. We finally have some proof of the value that this little toad provides to the team, more than just seeing the enemy's health, which by the way is still really cool. Falco also really gets an exposure to his true value. Ever since the original game on SNES, it's noted that he's the ace pilot of the crew, but we never really get to see that at all. He mostly just serves as a rival to Fox if anything? Until Assault, that is. Here, we see Fox's leadership really step into focus, and he consistently tasks Falco with watching the skies because of his particular skill as a pilot. We even get these awesome sections where you get to ride on the wing and shoot at enemies while Falco takes you from place to place so carefully. These moments aren't just cool gameplay. They aren't just the coolest set pieces we've seen in the series so far. They also serve to show the trust between the two characters and the absolute skill of both of them. I want to play Star Fox. What do you want from me? I have no idea what we could play. I have, you know, we, we could play anything really. Just like, just any game. Be fine. Yes, yes, I get it. But I got to finish the campaign, dude. What more do you want from me? What do you want me to do? Star Fox. Is this just like what you do? Overall, Star Fox Assault as a single player experience is rather fine. It's not great, I don't think, but where it's great, it is really great. It's just not a lot of it is great. I actually think the increased narrative is a brilliant one, but it's just, it's incomplete. If I could be picky, what I'd want to see from a Star Fox plot would be to still have the branching paths, similar to that of Star Fox 64, uh, specifically the fact that the branches occur via actions by the player, rather than a simple route selection like the original game. I'd love to see the characters respond and react to different events, and to have each path slightly change how the party handles each new obstacle. Realistically, this wouldn't be too hard considering there actually aren't that many different routes in 64, it just feels like there are. So this should be reasonably manageable and would really allow Nintendo to explore the characters even more deeply while keeping to that arcadey replayability that Star Fox shines so much from. I know what they went with with that incredibly focused linear narrative, and for what it's worth, I love it and I'm okay with that but I wish it was a little bit of a compromise. Oh, oh, and we actually need to keep Star Wolf around at any cost, and we absolutely need to keep his new theme song because this is probably the best part of the entire game. Look, I love the original Star Fox 64 Wolf theme. I really do. It's so upbeat and awesome. The Smash Brothers Brawl version is arguably even better as it's just a bit more clear, but damn dude, the fact that Assault went the complete opposite direction in this attitude of his track, it nailed its antithetical approach to such a degree, it's just, uh, it's so good, it's, it's so good. And I also still need to mention Wolf a bit more here, because while Star Wolf is back, yes, and Pigma is actually now a villain that even Star Wolf wants to kill, there's now only the trio of Wolf, Leon, and Panther, who's a new member, but it's Wolf who completely steals the show here. His lines are brutal, 
and his confidence is so intimidating. Pigma. Don't know anything about Pigma. But there is one thing. I'm owed an apology. And I will have it. This version of Wolf is easily the best we've had so far. And it is a bit cheesy that we also get that classic cliche moment where Fox and Wolf work together to take out the Aperoids together. But I can't help but think it's a bit convenient that the first time Wolf helps you out, it also leads to potentially killing General Pepper. I don't know, maybe I'm thinking too deeply into it, or maybe the game really did just sell Wolf to me so well, but it's just a bit too perfect for Wolf, you know? Y you know what I mean? Like, though he does come in clutch and assist in the final destruction of the Aperoid Queen, there's clearly growth here, but I'm not sold it was entirely trying to be helpful. Assault also does copy something else from Star Fox 64 in its story. So, in 64, Peppy says the famous line, Never give up! Trust your instincts! While, yeah, it's quotable and everything, what makes that line stick out to me so much is that when you beat the hard mode route of Star Fox 64, Fox's father, James McCloud, says the exact same words to his son. Never give up. Trust your instincts. This does a lot here. It really sells Peppy as a father figure to Fox, while also tying together an overarching message to the experience. Assault does the same thing. But this time, it's Wolf attempting to help. After the Battle of Corneria, Fox is told, Let me give you one piece of advice. Don't hesitate. When the time comes, just act. This would be reiterated yet again when attempting the final mission. And while it can be exhaustingly viewed as yet another throwback to 64, given just how good the pacing and setup is to this campaign, I think tying the message back to Fox from Wolf of all characters really deepens the potential for each actor in this story. In general, the mix-up of hopping in and out of vehicles across maps with multiple objectives like having to watch the sky as well as sabotage weapon depots inside of a base, Assault easily creates the most varied experience thus far. And balancing all of that can be a bit anxiety inducing and really fun. While the controls can be a bit, well, actually garbage at times, depending on who you ask, and while pressing the R button with the dual stick layout on the GameCube is genuinely going to put your hand in agony from hitting it so often, the fact that Assault was beat on by critics and fans so much back then is genuinely unfair. It's far less memorable and quotable than 64, but it's still a really good time, even if an incredibly short one. There's a lot to love here, and while I can't say it usurped 64 for me personally, I can't say I was ever once bored like I was in Adventures. Besides that last level, where the level is way too big and there are just way too many enemies. Come on, let's play Star Fox. Okay. Fine, we will play some Star Fox multiplayer. I mean, that's what this game was supposed to be anyway, right? Like you can clearly tell by the map design. I mean, it's very small stages that were clearly meant to be kind of that Armada focused multiplayer experience that, well, yeah, I mean, the maps kind of suck as a single player thing, but let's do it. Fine, let me make a call. We'll see what we can do. Hey. Yeah, yeah. I need a I need, I need a hand for a multiplayer. Can you give me Can you give me three of them? Three? Yeah, yeah. No, no. Leave that one. Uh, give, give me Give me the other one. Yeah, the other one with the robe. Yep. Can you send them through the the door right now? The portal again, huh? Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. Let's get this out of the way. Want to play Star Fox? Nope, not today. Try again. I think I'm gonna order some pizza. Yo, nice digs. Yo, this paint job sucks. Ugh. All right, everything's already all set up. Just make sure to put your name tag on, all right? What's this for? Just wear it. 
What does 3P mean? It's just to show your third player so everyone watching doesn't get confused. Wait, who's watching? Look, I don't know, I just... I just kind of pretend like people are watching while I do this stuff. Wow, talk about fooling yourself. Bro, you're wearing a bathrobe. And no pants. This label fucking sucks. There are actually a decent amount of levels and unlocks in general for the multiplayer in Star Fox Assault. By mastering each stage in the single player, you basically unlock a new thing of some sort. It might be a new level, a new weapon, the wolf and chip, or heck, even Wolf himself and Peppy. Peppy hair don't care! I thought we were playing Wind Waker. What? That's a single player game. Yeah, but the soundtrack doesn't fucking suck. Dibs on Slippy. Ew, who would want to play Slippy? You will not talk about my son that way. While it doesn't take too long to get used to, one of the toughest parts about Star Fox Assault, I just gotta say, it is its controls. Thankfully, you have three different controller options, but they all kind of suck in their own unique way. You have option one, which allows you to move with the left stick and shoot with the A button, but you have to stop and aim with R and then use the movement stick to aim your shots. In general, it's a great way to get yourself killed. Option two, is closer to that dual stick layout that we're mostly all familiar with now, where you can aim with the C stick and shoot with the R button, which is easily the most comfortable option. But, and I can't believe I'm about to criticize the perfection that is the GameCube controller, but actually shooting and holding down this R button all day will destroy your finger. It's genuinely painful after a few hours, given how analog the trigger is. And the third option is to move with R and aim with the left stick and shoot with A, which will just get you back to another broken finger. I, I, uh, I think my controller's broken. Oh, here we go. No, seriously, it just keeps going left. Dude, your controller fucking sucks. I have absolutely no idea what I'm doing. Oh, you're mine. You're mine. Wait, 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 how, how do I use the shield? I don't know who I'm shooting at, but you're totally dying. It's the B button, by the way. Bro, you fucking suck. You guys ever played Spyro? When are we ordering pizza? Most of the maps allow you to hop in and out of vehicles, and honestly, that port's pretty fun. Finding all of the different weapons across the map feels like an old school arena shooter and it's a good time. Running someone over with a Landmaster will always be funny. The setup for the multiplayer is actually fun. If you know what you're doing, that is. If you aren't used to these controls, like these specific controls, for assault specifically, or if you just invite a bunch of people over to play the multiplayer who don't know much about the game, they're probably gonna have a bad time. Map knowledge and game knowledge just destroy in this multiplayer. I mean, as it does in a lot of games, but if someone picks Falco, for example, and gets shot like twice, they're dead. Oh yeah, and all of the characters have unique stats, which is actually pretty neato, but besides Slippy's massive health pool, most people aren't gonna really know much of a difference. Oh, I'm coming again for you, I'm coming. Yo, leave me alone, stop. Dude, you're so dead, you're so dead. And there we go. Wait, one player loses? What? Then who? I did. And I killed myself. All pizzas, one topping, $7.99. Easily the worst of the maps are the Arwing levels. I honestly can't believe I'm saying this given how much I liked the 64 multiplayer, but the thing is these stages are so big and everything wrong with the 64 multiplayer is here because there's like nothing happening in them. Upgrades are so spread out and a good like 80 to 90% of the time, you'll just be flying in empty space, trying to find someone to shoot. Given how good the Arwing controls are, it's a shame that these stages just kind of suck overall. All of the others are a good time though, where you can run around, hop on the Landmaster, do some fun stuff in the Arwing, and back to being on foot. Yes, being on foot is actually fun. It's not bad. These maps offer a great variety and definitely how you're gonna have the most fun playing multiplayer. I have absolutely no idea where I am. I've been lost for like 10 minutes. Oh, you're so dead, 2P. Dude, my controller just keeps going left. What is this, a Mad Cat? Oh, oh, it's GameStop. Even worse. Dude, they're right behind you, watch out. I can't turn. Oh, I'm on that ass. Dude, they're right behind you. They're to your right. To your right. I bet they are. Dude. You fucking suck. 
Alrighty, what's the next map, team? Look, if I can't play Spyro, can I at least just play something else with Slippy in it? What about 007 Agent Under Fire? That's a fun game. That's on Super Nintendo? Dude, we're playing GameCube. Like, from Drake and Josh? I love frogs. All right, fine. Uh, someone get Agent Under Fire set up. I'm gonna go finish talking to my camera upstairs. Pizza's almost here, by the way. You know, I, I, I know I can be a little difficult sometimes, but I, I just want to say I, I do appreciate the invite. That was very kind of you guys. It's a shame this party sucks. <sighs> and yeah, that about sums up my experience at Star Fox Assault. Bye-bye!